make a list of all those issues that we know of so far that have to be dealt with. So that was that was why it was such a broad um, agenda, because those are some of the issues that I already knew that had come up. So with that, what I will um, do, I guess, is start with the treasurer's office. Is there Are there issues that you know of that we have to deal with that are related to COVID-19? Uh, this is Beth. I guess um, I would just uh, give you um, a two-line two, two summary of what I just said in Senate Finance and Appropriations. Uh, we have sufficient cash to meet our obligations. We expect to be able to pay, uh, make our payments to uh, retirees, to employees, to um, to vendors, uh, to individuals uh, with needs that are in our, our various systems uh, without dis disruption and on time. And uh, we are establishing sufficient backups and contingencies uh, uh, for, for our systems and, and options. But we will be able to pay all, all of the uh, payments. There will be no disruption. So just wanted to let you know that that news. That's, good. that's the best news we've heard all day. <laughs> okay. So um, while the Treasurer's Office is on the phone, I will bring one, up one of the issues that came from law enforcement um one of the we are no longer running training classes right now because of the grouping people together social distancing um we have a number of people who will within the next couple months be forced to retire and we have a number of people who have retired at 55 because that's the age for the troopers and the in the state. So is there any way at this time to delay those um, forced retirements so that because we are hurting for law enforcement right now? So that's a question for the treasurer's office. That That's an issue. I, I guess I don't expect you to have an answer today, but we will put that on the agenda for um, next week someday to really get into it and see what we can do. Does that make sense? Okay, thank you. And Erica, that probably is mostly you and Beth, huh? Uh, I think it's probably Erica, um, um, Tim Duggan, and Michael Clawson. Oh, okay. All right, so does it... Are there no issues out there that we need to deal with, committee, that you've heard no, of? I thought, I thought we were still waiting for the treasurer to identify any. Well, she didn't. Well, you just identified one we need to deal with with the treasurer. Anything else that you have, Jeanette, for the treasurer? No, that's what I had for the treasurer's office. Can I just say... Treasurer has, Anthony? Well, we talk about it being a, a treasurer's issue, which it is, but if it's a has to do with their contract, I would imagine it's a contract. In other words, if they're supposed to retire at 55, I just wonder what, what the, yeah, we'd have to take a look at the contract and see what it allows or disallows, I would think. Well, it's a matter of statute, actually. And uh, so we okay. have to take a look at that. And and frankly, there's a, um, a committee that's been working on this, the Law Enforcement Retirement Benefit Study Committee and we submitted a progress report. Uh, I guess I would caution against um, jumping ahead of that uh, report. Um, I understand the need, but uh, 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 the retirement age is a very um, significant issue in terms of safety as well. Um, and we, we, we would recommend that uh, we, we take a look at it within the context of, uh, of the, the current process. And I understand the desire to um, 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 to to move forward on on this, but uh, it has a big impact uh, uh, in terms of, um, as I said, safety. Plus, it has uh, specific uh, legal and regulatory issues. And I don't know if uh, if if it would be okay. Or do you want me to wait to next week, or we could have Tim Duggan talk about it a little bit? No, I would rather wait because. I want to get it on and I want to get those people who are asking the questions about the retirement on here and have some information because it, 
we're beginning to face a pretty serious issue out there with law enforcement. And um, we are passing all kinds of um, legislation that defies uh, current statutes and does it or that is in opposition to current statutes, but that does it only for a limited period of time because of this um, crisis that we're facing. So I'd rather wait and we'll put it on the agenda for we'll put it on for Tuesday. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there other are there any issues from the treasurer's office that you feel that we as a government operations committee need to deal with? Well, I guess the only thing I would add is that uh, uh, that uh, as we're working through this and you're thinking about issues, um, I have a very strong um, opinion that uh, we need to take care of hourly employees as well, and uh, there are hourly employees uh, in the municipal system, uh, whether they work in schools as um, support staff to the uh, to to the teachers and and students, um, or whether they are uh, uh, municipal workers. And uh, we want to make sure that they're taken care of in the process. Um, we're looking at our retirement um, statutes right now, um, and uh, and and our, and our practices. And uh, we just want to alert you that we might have some information on that. I don't know if Michael or Erica want to talk to that anymore, but uh, that would be one issue. For me, it's it's a matter of making sure that we've uh, taken care of our people. Okay. Thank you. We'll put that on. We'll put that on the same day. Okay. Okay. So, any anybody else out there, VSEA? Do you have any issues that you? Um, I I think that Steve, um, are you there? I'm here. I think that um, perhaps the issue with Woodside we should leave to the Judiciary Committee because they've already been working on that, and there's no need to duplicate. We have enough things to do everybody um, but are there other vsea issues that we should i think the state the veterans home is an issue um i would say a, a couple that is a, a few things one is the the veterans home and across state government there's a serious lack of per personal protective equipment mm -hmm. um and i think it would be i don't know what the government operations committee can do about that but it would be good to get a report from the administration and where that stands um because we do have people in prisons and correctional facilities and at the state hospital and at the vet's home uh, and in other places especially in dcf um, going in locations where they could easily contract uh, covid19 and there's no gloves there's no masks there's no anything okay um, so that would be one thing. The thing is, this is a, maybe a little bit of a longer term issue, and generally it starts in the House, but um, we are going to need a pay act. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I, I did list. get a message from Secretary Condos about that, too. Okay. Secretary Condos? <laughs> yeah, he was Secretary Condos. You know that, that guy, Secretary of State? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Remember him? Yes, that's very nice of him to call on behalf of the PAC. Yeah. Um, his, his concern, I'll tell you what his concern was, and then we'll put it on to see how, and I'll talk with Sarah about how we're going to deal with this, is that um, he was very concerned that a lot of um, executive salaries have gone up, and the people who are, and they are working very hard, that's understanding, but that the, um, like the, janitorial staff their sec their salaries have not gone up they're um still working for like 14 15 dollars an hour and they're yeah. in um having facing a lot of challenges with this and a lot of risks so um, that was his i think the only other couple of things on my list one is um i don't know exactly if this is a government operations issue but it does affect the state workforce you know, the thing that is confusing about the direction the administration has given us is it, it doesn't, there really are essential employees who absolutely need to be there. And then there's all these other categories. Basically, the governor deemed all state employees essential. And, and there are, so there are people in, who are working, despite the governor's order, uh, at offices, um, 
And it really, they're not correctional officers. They're not BGS. They're not law enforcement officers. They're not nurses. You know, they're not immediately responding to the crisis, but they're somehow being asked to come to offices and we don't know why. So we're starting, we're trying to work that out. That might be just something to have on your radar. And this, I don't know if it belongs in government operations or where it belongs, but we're starting to get calls from members who are paying for childcare, um, even though their kids can't go to the childcare center. Um, but meanwhile, the childcare facility has filled up with essential personnel, the kids of essential personnel. And they were concerned about uh, childcare centers making a windfall, charging existing parents who can't send their kids while also charging emergency personnel. Um, and I don't know how widespread that is, but it's, I've gotten two or three calls in the last day or so with concerns about people who are paying for childcare slots they're not using while uh, that slot is being filled by a child of an emergency, somebody who's emergent, who's who's working as an emergent as a as an essential it, employee. Is your concern that they're that they're those slots are being double paid for? Yes. Yes. That they're well, charging well, people who don't have any money to pay for slots that to, they can't to keep use, them open, it, and it, also it, charging the essential personnel for their kid. But I mean, it just seems, I don't know how widespread it is, but it does seem like somewhere we have to make sure that the child care centers are not making a windfall. Somehow I can't see them making any windfall, but it is an issue it's if it's happening. Right. I, I don't know where that rightly belongs, child I care. I don't know where that goes either. We'll, 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 we'll look into it though. Thank you. Okay. Anything okay. else? That's all I got on my list for now. May I ask okay. Steve, Jeanette, may I ask Steve yes. a question? Yes, please. Oh, Chris Bray has joined us with a new That's background. A your question. <laughs> my, my question is what percent of the of VSBA workforce is now working remotely? I mean, you said some of them were going into the office, but were not considered essential, even though all state employees are considered essential. Do you have a notion of how many are actually now working remotely? Uh, I don't. Uh, the Department of Human Resources might. Um, I would say the vast majority of them are. Uh, but I can't give you a specific percentage. DHR, I think, does track that information. So they they may be able to give that give you a more specific answer to that. Well, Tom is on the call. Tom is? He was. There he is. You're muted, Tom. An issue. Uh, yeah, we can hear you now. Now you're pointing your finger at us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I should be unmuted now. You are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my understanding is that the administration is tracking data on where people are working. Um, I don't know, I don't have the answer to the question, obviously, but I can pass it along to the commissioner. Thanks. So, Steve, <laughs> when you say that um, they are not essential, but they're reporting to offices, what kinds of people are you thinking of? Because I'm thinking of people like uh, people in Volk Rehab may not be considered essential to responding to COVID, but they certainly are in terms of dealing with their clients. Right, so that's a good example. We did. We do have a lot of folks who, who I don't know if they're still doing it, um, but they were. There were a lot of folks from Voc Rehab who were being called into their offices, and, and they were saying that they essentially could do the work uh, from home, and they don't know why they were being asked. That may have changed since the governor's um, <laughs> stay-at-home order. Uh, oh, okay. I, I can uh, speak. I can speak to that. I think since the governor's stay-at-home order any state employee who has the capability to work remotely is or should be working remotely. Got it. Okay. Right. I think what would be, what would be clear is if we had a classification of like super essential people, you're a nurse, you need to show up. You're a police officer, you need to show up versus everybody is an essential employee. It's just, it's creating, it's creating confusion for a lot of reasons. Well, I, I, I don't know how you deal with that exactly. If anybody has the ability to work remotely, 
even though they're considered an essentially employee. I mean, a law enforcement officer can't really work remotely, nor can a nurse, but a voc rehab counselor can. So they might be considered essential, but able to work remotely. So we should clear that. We'll clear that up. We'll get um, DHR. Tom, will you um, have some answers for us in a report on Monday? I mean, on Tuesday. Uh I will I will get what I can by Tuesday. Thank you. Okay, other other issues that anybody has? Um is Mark Anderson on the call? I am Senator. Thank you. Um I know that we're having some um issues around law enforcement. Uh this is Sheriff Anderson. Do you wanna um, tell us what we're trying to do today is just get a list of the things that we need to address next week. Uh, so I'm looking to see if we can establish a source of emergency funding for sheriffs uh, through the COVID-19 crisis. Okay. Okay. All right. We got that on oh, the list. Stop. Sorry. May I just ask a question of Mark? Uh, yes, Mark, you're the sheriff's uh, employees are all considered essential. They're all doing their jobs. They haven't stopped uh, the, the work they're doing other than the court work, uh, which is obviously slowed down. But all their uh, town work is what what is the emergency need for funding for the sheriffs? Uh, I'll use my office as an example. Our dispatch operates uh, uh, 24 hour dispatching for three agencies, including my own. Uh, it operates at a loss each year, it's subsidized through the work that we do that is uh, not part of the state or county funded work. And without any of the uh, typical revenue that I would have coming in right now, I won't be able to sustain operating the dispatch center. Got it. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, just I think that they, sure. they subsidize almost everything that they do for the state by and the towns by um, contracts with places like Mount Snow and Stratton and and they're not operating so got it are there other issues uh, mark that around um, getting um, people uh in terms of getting people, I can't speak for the sheriffs uh, specifically. Um, there's certainly issues with the academy and training that I think you've already uh, outlined. Uh, and that's just what it is. It's, uh, and then uh, another issue, uh, I'm not sure if it's a GovOps issue, but uh, was regarding fees for uh, service of civil process, which I believe that was proposed in the house. They are, they are working on that? I, I believe so, but I'd have to defer to Sheriff Boniak. Okay. He, is he on the phone by any chance? He is not. Okay, we'll ask him. Because we don't want to be duplicating whatever they're doing over there. If they're mm -hmm. starting that, we'll, okay. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Um, all right. Um, anybody else? Is Karen Horn on here by yet? By now? It's 10 after, almost 10 after three. There are going to be, I think, a large number of municipal issues as we wade through yeah. this. This is, sorry, this is Chris Camp and the Regional Commission. Good. Thank um, you, Chris. Hey. Uh, I think Karen is probably still on this, uh, the weekly state emergency operations call with municipal officials and regional okay. planning commissions and EMDs. Um, I, 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 I can't speak for her, but I know she shared with us um, an amendment to Title 24, Chapter 33, uh, which would allow uh, electronic signatures during this right. period. Um, and the other thing that, that, that was included in the communication with us, me and the regional planning commissions, uh, was that if you need a definition for electronic signature, um, there's one under Title IX, Chapter 20. 
and and uh, one of the things I would ask is uh, regional commissions would also benefit from that authority. Um, I don't know that we don't have that authority. State agencies do, but it would be good for us to have that authority as well. Okay. Are, are there any other, uh, Chris, while you're there, um, are there any other permit, you know, other issues that we have that need to be addressed from the planning commission point of view? No, I think uh, you guys covered it in the, uh, um, in the bill that just passed. Uh, coverage of the deadlines I, I, and uh, so I, I think you, I think it's covered I think it's covered through there because um, certainly for our operations and I think for most town operations I think we're good great okay so Chris that I have this is Jeanette I have to say that that um, thing that was sent out from your office about um, key, FEMA and how to deal with that and how to keep track of everything was very helpful I sent that I forwarded that to all the people in the Senate and to, and I'm sure Karen Horn already knows that, but I forwarded it to her too. It was very clear and well, well written. It, Great. It, it, it was good. Great. And I, one of the I, things too, that we're just, just so you know that we're working on with our, within our regional commission and I'm sure others will be working on them too, are uh, basically a, a, a single web page. We're working with United Way and Groundworks and others as a single source to go to information for uh, a whole variety of needs. Um, so we can all have it in one place and be something that would be kept up to date. Um, so that's a work in progress, but uh, we'll send oh. information out about that as we as we continue. But I'm sure other, it's probably gonna be done differently in different places, uh, you know, organized in whatever way makes sense. In some cases, it may be the regional commission. In our case, the leadership on this is probably as far as the entities that are most connected are, are more likely like United Way and Groundworks and we'll make sure that we include information from throughout the region. Our role is going to be more the kind of coordinating and hosting of that information. So um, this may be approached in different ways, but everybody I think is standing up pretty you know, quickly to uh, uh, get as much information as consumable format as possible. Okay, thank you. Other things that um, I wondered if I know I'm sure there's no EMS people on here, but I wondered if if um, the online training. I know that we're still short of EMS people, and that we probably need them more than ever. And um, if we can do something. With the if if there's time, if people can do something with the um, online training so that we can get more people signed up, I don't know if if that's something that needs to happen quickly or if it even is feasible. I guess uh, I should talk to DOH about that. Yeah, yeah, and maybe we could fast track our bill, which we've sent to the House, because that's that our EMS bill has some provisions in there that would help the, this emergency right now. So if we got that rolled out and got the house to act on it, that would be helpful. Yeah, and it may be that there's so many things in there that they wouldn't wanna do the whole thing, but we could at least pull out the EMS stuff maybe. Exactly, exactly. I'm just, I'm thinking of the work that we've already done and, and how we can right. prioritize within some of the work we've already done that is actually, very useful right now, like the licensing stuff. And, and right. the Anybody else have anything that they would like to throw out here? Well, I guess I'd expand on that, which is I think we should uh, look at what we've passed and, and see if there are things that are COVID related that would help facilitate the crisis at the moment or you know, uh, I'm thinking of our OPR bill. I'm thinking of uh, the EMS bill. I mean, uh, uh, some of those bills have some provisions that could be very useful right now. Yeah, yeah. And I think we want to hear, um, we heard from the sheriffs about um, possibly some emergency funding, but we, we will, uh, there is going to be money in there for municipalities also. And in the um, federal bill that comes, and I'm not sure how, 
it would be helpful if we appropriations clearly will make the decisions on here, but it would be helpful if we had some suggestions about how the municipalities felt that <clears throat> it would be most helpful to them. Does that make sense? Yes. No. Okay. So I don't know if Karen is still on here. Um, I got a note from um, Mark Hughes saying that if if we were hearing things that we should hear from the um, disadvantaged communities that are most impacted by this. And I'm not sure that he had anything more specific. I don't know if Mark is on the phone, but I did tell him to send me a note about what what specifically he was um, referring to. So we'll have that. Uh, Anybody Chair else? White? Yes. This is Chris Bray. Hello, Chris Bray. Good afternoon. Um, <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, communities at risk, one that I'm conscious of over here in Addison County, I think it's much more widespread, but there's uh, a whole group of people who work and live on farms who are here on like uh, special visas and stuff like that. They're they, they don't have regular access to many things. Um, and I'm just wondering if, uh, I know that ag is aware of this, but it's, um, it's broader than just agriculture. But I did want to mention that if we're looking at communities at risk and maybe who don't have uh, great access to healthcare and probably would also, they may not, uh, I don't know, could, could whoever today. has the could whoever has the phone ringing mute their phone unless it's you, Chris Bray? It's me, Allison Clarkson. Shocking. Okay, please ask people not to call you. <laughs> can you do that? I didn't realize you could do that. Well, you can, you can put your phone in the the other room. And if they for order of the chair of government operations, stop calling me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> You got that, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's one um, group. Allison, related. can you mute yourself? Uh, so I, no, but I'm... Or put your phone in the other room. Okay. Go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> So that's all I was saying, just that there is yeah. there is a farm community that has uh, problems with access to health care. And I also just don't know who's looking out in terms of work rules and, you know, safe distancing and all the rest. With farm workers, with those communities that are at risk. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Good afternoon. Um, Senator Jones. White. Uh, two, two people just spoke up. I think one sounded like Karen Horn, and I couldn't tell the other one. Am I right? Jeanette, one of the people was myself, and it's Ingrid Jonas with State Police. Oh, hi, Ingrid. Hi. Um, I just wanted to chime in that. Um, I haven't until the very you've you've faded way away. I haven't talked with Commissioner Sherling regarding any needs for VSP, so perhaps on Tuesday we could report back. Yeah, that would be great. And Senator White, it was Rosemary Gretkowski also okay. doing at the same time. Okay. Um, and I have Mike Sherling, uh, excuse me, Mike DeRocher is also yep. on the phone from Fire Safety. And we would love to have an opportunity to discuss um, some of the licensing requirements for electricians and plumbers that are in the fire safety, um, in their purview for regulation. So if that could be put on the agenda, I think we'd appreciate that. We can do that. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Is that what you were going to suggest, Mike? Yes. Okay. 
Great, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Mm -hmm. And if you if you think of other things from DPS that need to, or the troopers, either one, just um, I know that this was pretty short, and the uh, issues keep coming up. Instead of it isn't oh. a, a list that is finite on Friday afternoon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I wish it was a list that was finite on Friday <laughs> afternoon. Wouldn't that be nice? Finite Fridays. <laughs> wow. Okay, other. Was Karen able to join us? <laughs> I think Chris indicated that she was probably still on that meeting, but wow. I know that she she did say that right now the most pressing thing for them right now was his electronic um, signatures. Right. And um, I'm sure that if other things come up that she'll let us know. So what I would suggest everybody is, um, I don't want to keep us here any longer than we have to, unless there's something else that if people think of other things that we, we do need to deal with, um, and all we're dealing with this week is in response to, to COVID. After that, we may start dealing with other, um, according to our leadership, we may start dealing with other, other things that are important, but not in response to the, the emergency. So if you think of other things, I, if you would um, e email them to me. Um, oh, I do have one other thing. Betsy Ann Rask so kindly reminded us that if we have any interest in passing a constitutional amendment, it has to be done before we adjourn. We have four constitutional amendments on our wall, I believe. I think three of them uh, deal with um, length of terms. And one of them deals with free men and free women in the Constitution. Does anybody have an interest in taking any of those up before the end of the session? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're shocked. We're shocked. Chris? Uh, can you hear me? It's, there yes. We go. Um, not, it, it, not this year. OK. Anthony? I don't feel an urgent need to bring them up, no. We have other things to do. Allison? I'm with Brian. Yes, mine was a resounding no also, so, okay. Madam so Chair, that's... can I add one more thing that I had yes. on my list, sorry. Um, yes? I know that this is a, a larger discussion, Senate as well, um, but I, our committee might be interested in thinking through and making recommendations to the full Senate on uh, the how we might do remote meetings with voting and remote for the for committees as well as for the full Senate since that's something we work on regularly anyway and mm -hmm. just produced a bill. So I know that Senate rules is looking at it, but I wondered if there was a role maybe for Senate GovOps to play as well. We will find out and I think that we have our our um, constitutional and case law person right there on the line with us, right, Betsy Ann? I think Betsy she's still Ann? there. Yes, okay. I, and Tucker as well. Um, Tucker would also be involved with that. He couldn't be here today because he was double booked, but he just wanted me to let you know that he's here in spirit and he can be here if you need to speak with him also. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um, okay. Other things? Yes. Sarah, this is Gail, and I just okay. got an email from Karen Horn. Uh, apparently, she will be dialing in shortly. Okay. Do you know what time it is right now? I don't have a clock. I'm so out of it here. It is a good It's what? 323. Three oh, okay. We have a little bit of time. Okay, should we wait for Karen to dial in? Yes. yes. She is. Okay. We will wait. She's, in the meantime, does anybody else want to say anything at all about anything? Can I just bring up what Chris uh, mentioned, Madam Chair? 
The, um, yeah. the two resolutions that we passed, and I assume um, they've gone on, well, they don't need to be approved by the governor, do they? Uh, one of them did have to do with committees being able to vote remotely. And I thought we passed that and also any joint committees uh, with the ability to do the same thing. The question that we were going to be grappling with was whether the Senate as a whole body could do that. Am I not remembering correctly? Correct. I think I, I think you're correct. I think that the maybe what Chris was referring to, and I'm not sure that this was right, was um, how how best to do it. I think there are different ways that we might um, vote remotely and the committee it isn't as essential but with 30 people in the senate what are what are the safeguards and how best to do it okay. the, issue, the issue that i understood from this morning because we talked about this quite a bit in the senate call was the body mm -hmm. voting as a body yeah so the the uh we've taken care of the committee voting but what we haven't taken care of is how the senate votes so um, and we have a lot of expertise to pull together on that. Uh, it's remote voting is done all over the world. So there is Kevin Moore, I know, has expertise in this and some other, uh, obviously, expertise we can uh, uh, reach out to. But that, uh, if you weren't on that call, Brian, uh, I, Becca, Becca and Joe have asked us to send us their ideas by Sunday. Yes, I realize that, Allison. I was responding to what Chris had mentioned. That's all. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. And beyond voting, th another discussion related to all this was, should the okay. Senate adjourn? And if so, uh, you know, would we modify something like joint fiscal to give it capacities beyond what it currently has to just uh, make budget adjustments to make it a, a more fully rounded committee that could work through the balance of the year post adjournment, whenever that date comes. Right, or the emergency, uh, the joint com emergency committee was discussed. Well, right, and so that's exactly the kind of discussion. The, the e-board is quite small. Right. Joint fiscal is bigger, um, but they're both very small compared to the full body mm -hmm. and, and might we want to consider rec recommendations, for instance, on making them a little bigger to represent different uh, aspects right. that are, they're basically fiscal at the moment. Right. And I, I do think that um, although this is an issue for the entire Senate to grapple with and for the joint or for the rules committee, um, I think that we, we could have some conversations about it because we are, we are the voting committee. I mean, we, that's what we do is, elections and voting. And right. So I think that we can um, tap on the expertise that we have available to us. So joint rules could consider delegating some of that work to us is what I think Chris is asking. Well, well I'm we not even gonna ask we... them to delegate. I'll just, we'll just do it, put it on our agenda. Right, we could, we, we could also take a look at whatever they're considering, look at the options and we could discuss the options and prioritize right. which we think might be more appealing. Right. Yeah, I wasn't really recommending delegating, just uh, that Disgusting. it seems like something we might want to uh, evaluate and make a recommendation to, to rules, for instance, go the yep. other direction. Right. Well, since, actually, since that's going to happen pretty quickly, I think, maybe we should put that on for first thing on Tuesday. Good idea. And maybe, Jeanette, you'd be kind enough to email Becca and Joe and and let them know we think we might take first crack at it yeah i will do that so while we're um waiting here for karen to dial in is, is susanna uh davis are you on the line Senator White, karen has yes. joined us okay is first of all though is susanna on the line i'm here madam chair okay thank you from the administration's uh, point of view, is there anything that you can think of that you um, that we need to deal with as a government operations committee? You know, perhaps you might be asking the wrong person, but um, okay. I, I would say no. I think that 
if I can speak on behalf of the admin, we're here to respond um, to needs that are raised here. I, I'm personally unaware of, of things that, um, that someone in the admin may want to bring before this committee, but I can follow up by email afterwards if that's not accurate. Okay, that's great. Thank you. And thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for holding the hearing. Yep. Karen? And Karen, Chris Campany did um, comment about the electronic signatures. So uh, if there are other issues that you need right now. In this lull, but while we're waiting for Karen, I have to say, Anthony, your your it looks like geraniums are beautiful. <laughs> you thank Debbie for that. <laughs> thank Debbie for that. Hi, yes. this is Karen. Um, I <laughs> Hi, I keep Karen. getting cut off, but I seem to be here for the moment. Yep. And it's it's better if I don't have a picture because then the then it seems to hang on for longer. Okay, so are there issues um, that you can think of right now that we need to deal with besides the electronic signatures? Um, the electronic signature seems to be the one that is most important right now. And I'm waiting to, um, I'm hoping to get some, you know, other proposals from folks, but I don't have them at this point. Okay. The one thing that I that might be helpful, and I don't know how how we would do this at all, but there is, and I don't know if we really have a role here, but generally uh, the appropriations committee asks us for recommendations when it comes to um, giving out money, and I know that in the federal money there, uh, bill there will be some money for municipalities, and I don't know if they'll ask us for recommendations, but if if so, once we know what's in there, um, if we can have any um, be helpful to the um, municipalities, that would be great. So, as um, um, yeah, so this morning when I was listening to the um, Ways and Means Committee, I believe, uh, and then also Congressman Welch was on the uh, Emergency Operations Center call for local officials. Um, it sounded like perhaps it was the governor's office that ne that made those decisions. I'm not sure. In any case, um, we are going to have big holes in municipal budgets due to um, late payments and, and delinquencies and requests for abatement of taxes. And we're also going to have um, significant expenses for our emergency medical services folks mm -hmm. in particular. So um, yeah, we will have um, recommendations slash requests around the funding piece and I'm happy to put those together for you. Okay, that sounds good. Anything else? Not anybody right else? Now. Okay. okay, anybody else have anything? No, no sir. Okay, so what I would suggest is if people think of stuff um, when they think of them, just email, if you email them to the whole committee and to Gail so that we all kind of see them and then we can put them on a list and start um, looking at them. And we're scheduled for Tuesday from one to three and Thursday from one to three. Is that right, Gail? Uh Right, that's what that's what I'm understanding. And I'll send that out to the committee and others on this call so that uh, you'll have that in front of you. Okay, and then Friday, if we need it, we may not need it, but okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. weekend. Bye.